Hi, I'm Damon Smith, Extension Field Cross Pathologist for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today I'd like to give you a Wisconsin perspective in terms of tar spot management for corn. In 2018, we had a substantial epidemic of tar spot in the upper Midwest and especially in Wisconsin. For those of you who may not have observed this disease, here's what it looks like here in these images. You can see in this close-up here that we can find these tar spot splatter-like signs, which are actually the reproductive structures of this particular fungus. Within each of these little tar spots are actually hundreds of spores. So you can imagine there's a, a pretty substantial inoculum load on this, uh, on this plant residue. So where did tar spot come from? Tar spot actually has been known in Latin America for about 30 years now. However, it's a recent arrival here in the U.S., being first found in Indiana and Illinois in 2015. Tar spot is caused by the fungus Phylochera matus. However, there's also a tar spot complex, which includes Phylochera matus and the second fungus, Monographella matus. I'll talk a little more about where we stand in terms of the actual tar spot complex in the upper Midwest here in a, in a slide or two. We do know that the epidemic definitely was yield limiting in 2018. Prior to 2018, we considered tar spot more of a cosmetic problem, not causing substantial yield reductions. As I mentioned, most of the research data up to this point has been uh, produced out of Latin America. However, we are learning that we're having to sort of reinvent the wheel in terms of management here in the upper Midwest. Here are some more signs and symptoms of this particular disease. You can again see these small black raised structures. These are actually called stromata. Again, these are the reproductive structures of this particular fungus. And these can affect all the green material on the plant, including the husks. And in some cases, uh, in severe, uh, severely affected fields, we have observed the tar spots on the stalks as well. In terms of where we're at with the tar spot complex, I can say that uh, Monographella probably isn't in Wisconsin. And we know that because we've sampled from many, many uh, different uh, uh, samples that were sent into our diagnostic clinic and also into my lab. What we have done is actually sampled from what's called the fish eye lesion. Okay? And the literature says that these fish eyes uh, only form when you have both Phylochera matus and Monographella matus. However, we observed many fish eyes all across the upper Midwest, and we spent a lot of time actually sampling and trying to understand which fungi were involved in this fish eye symptom. We never could find monographella uh, in these uh, fish eyes. However, we did find substantial numbers of, of species of fusarium. Now, fusarium can be very common in the environment, so it could be that phylochromatus is simply causing this damage on our hybrids, and then fusarium is just coming in as a, as a, a saprophyte, if you will, on these, in the, on these fish eye lesions. We've also been working with colleagues in Illinois and Indiana and also in Iowa to understand uh, this fish eye symptom, and they have been unable to find monographella as well. So for all intents and purposes, we think we are dealing with just Phylochera matus here causing damage on corn. Why was tar spot so bad in 2018? Well, a lot of it had to do with the weather. We actually had very conducive conditions early on in the season when the corn crop was actually at a very susceptible uh, growth stage. Back in the mid-90s, this group, Hawk and others, uh, actually looked at weather parameters that uh, were responsible for tar spot epidemics. And what they found that was that monthly average temperatures ranging between 63 degrees Fahrenheit and 72 degrees Fahrenheit were, were conducive. Average relative humidity for the month of 75% or greater. Uh, substantial leaf wetness in the evening hours. 10 to 20 foggy days and rainfall of six inches or more were all conducive for uh, tar spot uh, epidemics in Latin America. In 2018, Modaleb and others then published this map, which shows us where the risk is uh, uh, interpolated actually for the upper Midwest Corn Belt. So what they did is they took these parameters that Hawk had reported in 1995 and overlaid those parameters on our historic weather information for the upper Midwest. The more intensive the red here, the greater the probability or chance of having a tar spot epidemic is. And you can see the deep dark red here in southern Wisconsin is indicative of 70 to 100 percent chance of tar spot. So we sit in an environment which uh, could be pretty uh, conducive for tar spot epidemic. Now in 2018, we also have confirmations of where tar spot was actually found here in the upper Midwest. Again, focusing here on Wisconsin, you can see that most of the major corn belt uh, was affected or, or we identified at least one field where we had tar spot present on corn. 
I will say that the majority of the, the epidemic started down here in the southwestern part of the state in Grant, Lafayette, Iowa County. That was sort of the epicenter in the state. And then it moved uh, from a southwest to a northeast uh, a movement up towards the Green Bay area with uh, a bit less severity up there. The major severity was in the southwest part of the state. To drill in a little closer and just look at, again, these confirmations here, you can see uh, which counties were, were uh, colored in red uh, with actual lab confirmations, either my lab or the state uh, pathology lab or also our, our diagnostic clinic on campus. We could also probably expand this a little more northward, but again, these are just what confirmations were actually sent into the clinics. Now, what do we know about tar spot? Well, we don't know more than we know, uh, but we did learn a bit in 2018 to help us uh, sort of plan for how do we manage this in 2019. We did learn a little about hybrids. Hybrids do differ in their susceptibility, and we'll look at some of that data here in a second. We also learned a little bit about the biology and epidemiology. We know some about fungicides, uh, fungicide efficacy, and also timing. When it comes to rotation and tillage, there's really no research-based information out there. However, this fungus does uh, survive on residue, so it's uh, you know, conceivable that controlling residue or burying that residue could help in reducing uh, the amount of tar spot in subsequent seasons. However, bear in mind that these uh, spores can actually fly 250 feet or more. So perhaps long distance movement is a major part of this epidemic uh, by which rotation and tillage may not necessarily have a great impact. So we're gonna learn more about that as we move forward. All of this is being supported by a team effort in Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, and Michigan trying to understand how, how do we improve management moving forward. Now, when it comes to uh, hybrid uh, susceptibility, we know that there's a big variation in, in reaction to tar spot. Uh, we had some uh, hybrids that were highly resistant to some hybrids that were highly susceptible. However, I sh should say that no hybrid was immune, so we could find some tar spot in every hybrid uh, across the state of Wisconsin. I'll also mention that no one brand was better than another, uh, so every hybrid has to stand on its own, and this is very important. You need to study the data on individual hybrids and try to identify those that showed some resistance. Yield loss was detected on susceptible hybrids, and we'll talk a little about that here in a second. Here's some data from Montfort, Wisconsin. Uh, these data were taken on August 31st, so just before Labor Day, and this is for an early relative maturity trial, so the hybrids in this trial range from 98 to 106 days. These, this test was conducted by uh, Joe, Dr. Joe Lauer's uh, program here at University of Wisconsin, and we were able to rate this hybrid trial for tar spot severity. The blue bars here indicate tar spot severity on the ear leaf. And as you can see, as tar spot severity increases up towards 50%, we do seem to have some reduction in canopy greening, which is indicated in these orange bars. And we have indicated the hybrids across this uh, horizontal axis. And again, you're looking at tar spot severity or canopy greening score along the vertical axis here. Another thing I'd like to point out is that it was very rare to find a hybrid that actually would rate higher than 50%. By the time an ear leaf was covered by 50% uh, or so uh, tar spot, we uh, were looking at pretty much a, a completely dried down hybrid. So there's some uh, interaction again with the fungus and the, and the hybrids here to cause early, early dying or early maturity. Just to show you what 50% looks like here, we have some computer-generated severity diagrams. We worked with a graphical artist to develop these. You can see this 50% uh, coverage here with these tar spots on the surface of the leaf. Here's 10% and then 5%. And we're also gonna be taking two different ratings moving forward, not only looking at the coverage of tar spots, but also how much necrosis or browning we actually have on the leaves. So you can see in the bottom images, the corresponding percentages for actual necrosis. There is a bit of a disconnect between the coverage, again, of these tar spots and this necrosis, so we're gonna be taking these two ratings moving forward and combining them into a, a, a single score. This may help us identify further resistance in some hybrids. 
To look at some more data, here's a late uh, relative maturity hybrid trial, uh, again in Monfort. So this trial was right next to the early uh, trial that I just showed you uh, on a couple slides earlier. These data were taken on September 4th, uh, 2018, and these hybrids range from 104 to 113 days. Again, we have tar spot severity on the ear leaves here in the orange bars, and you can see they don't, they don't really get any higher than 50%. And while the, the data aren't quite as clear as the early RM trial, you can see a corresponding decrease in canopy greening score as the tar spot severity increases. Now in terms of yield reduction, we took uh, yield uh, on all these hybrids in each of the trials, and I've uh, arranged these trials so that we have the early RM trial here in the left-hand uh, graph, and then the late RM trial here in the right-hand graph. We have the tar spot severity on the horizontal axis and then yield uh, on the vertical axis. You can see that this line that we regress through these uh, hybrid means here from that particular uh, early relative maturity trial, you can see this line actually has a, a, has a negative slope or actually goes down from left to right. That indicates that as tar spot severity increases on the ear leaves in this particular trial, we have a reduction in yield. And in fact, we can solve for the slope of that line and actually work out what the average yield loss was. And it turns out for every 10% increase in severity on the ear leaves, we actually had almost eight bushels per acre loss. So pretty substantial yield reductions with this particular epidemic. In the late RM trial, yield reduction was actually a little higher. However, overall yield potential was a bit higher than in the early RM trial at about 263 bushels versus 253 in the early RM. But you can see that slope of that line much more uh, uh, steep here. And in fact, when we solve that slope for every 10% increase in tar spot severity on the ear leaves, we had almost 14 bushel uh, per acre loss. So again, pretty substantial. If we pull out just high severity situations where the ear leaves range between 45 and 50% uh, ear leaf severity, we lost yield, uh, uh, our yield loss range between 40 and 60 bushels per acre. So again, very substantial. So clearly we need to do something else in terms of management, not just rely on hybrid resistance. And the next most logical step is fungicide and fungicide response. And we've gotten quite a few questions on mode of action and, and application timing. I can tell you that single mode of action products seem to be a bit inconsistent between trials, especially when we compare data uh, between Wisconsin and Michigan. We do know, however, that two and three A mode of action products actually were more consistent. So we're recommending those moving forward for the time being until we have better data. We also know that no fungicide cured tar spot. And we know also that timing was very important. So I'd like to address some of this in the next couple of slides here. So just to show you some data from a, a corn grain trial that we had at Arlington, Wisconsin, we planted the hybrid DKC 45-65 RIB on the 1st of May. We had application timings ranging from V6 to V12 to 14, and then VTR1 applications there. We did have a later tar spot epidemic that moved in in August, so this was later than uh, in that trial that I showed you from Montfort, and we harvested this trial on October 4th, 2018. Just to look at some data here, here are the treatments that we had in that particular trial. We also have the tar spot severity in terms of percent, again, on the ear leaves. We also have the canopy greening scores in the next column, and then also stalk rot severity. And then finally, yield here in this last column. Canopy greening is very telling here. Again, as tar spot severity increases, we typically get a loss uh, in canopy green score, and you can see that here. And also stalk rot, uh, was very Im important in this particular trial as well. As a leaf on a corn plant becomes colonized by these various foliar fungi, uh, we reduce photosynthetic capacity of that plant. The plant still needs to fill out the ear of that uh, corn plant, so it'll actually rob carbohydrates from the stalks. And so we saw some stalk loss uh, or stalk integrity uh, loss here uh, in severe tar spot epidemics. However, I will say that tar spot probably didn't lead solely to all the stock rot we saw. We did have many other foliar pathogens involved in 2018 that could be contributing to this. To look at some of the treatments here, we did notice in this particular trial that uh, later application timings seem to be uh, pretty important. Uh, that makes sense because those applications most closely corresponded to when the epidemic initiated. 
Uh, earlier applications such as the V6 applications or even the V12 to V14 uh, were a bit more inconsistent again because they were applied uh, a period before uh, that epidemic actually initiated. Treatments here uh, designated by the STARS are actually labeled treatments, currently labeled. So Triviprose had a label uh, since its inception. And then Delaro, Headline Amp, Quilt Excel, Preaxor, and Miravis Neo uh, currently have two EE special labels for the 2019 field season. You can see the tar spot severities uh, were, were a bit lower than that trial in Montfort. However, the non-treated check did uh, rate over 10%, and I showed you what 10% severity looked like, which was quite substantial. And you can see a pretty good loss here in canopy greening with only about 12% of the canopy still green on this rating date for the non-treated check. You can see some of these treatments doing quite well here, giving us a pretty good response in terms of reduction of tar spot severity and an increase in canopy greening score. And you can see the corresponding yields over there in the uh, right hand side of the slide. Just to show you what these treatments actually looked like, we took some pictures uh, out of a rep here that you can see uh, the non-treated check. Again, the canopy almost completely uh, uh, browned uh, here because of the tar spot epidemic. You can see in the A group here, we had headline amp at 10 fluid ounces at the uh, tasseling period performing pretty well. And then this experimental product from BASF doing quite well uh, in this trial, not different from headline amp. Other products that, that performed uh, pretty well for us, Miravis Neo at VT, uh, Quilt Excel here uh, at VT as well, and then Triva Pro uh, right in there as well. So these uh, three doing uh, statistically similar uh, to headline amp. Not quite as well as some of the others. We had Delaro at VT, uh, again, our experimental from BASF, but at an earlier timing, and then this earlier application of Preaxor. So again, you can see timing uh, giving us a bit of a, a reduction in terms of efficacy there. So we actually do have quite a few fungicide op options, again, all in the mixed mode of action, so two or three-way combinations, uh, but we need to get the timing of application right to maximize the efficacy. In order to improve application timing with these fungicides, we're actually working on uh, prediction models to help us advise those fungicide applications. In my lab, we've worked on developing actually three different models. Uh, we started by actually going back to that research work that was done in the mid-90s, and we developed a simple tar spot index model based on that information from that paper where we take the various weather parameters and then we affix an index and then we add that index score up and this ends up being on a scale of zero to seven. We also developed two other models which use uh, logistic regression which simply is to say that they uh, have a uh, rating basically between zero and 100 percent chance of, of a tar spot epidemic. This actually runs on the Sporecaster framework so those of you familiar with our Sporecaster app for white mold this is a very similar concept in that we take monthly average weather information and then we uh, plug that into our mathematical model and that gives us a probability of, of tar spot development. We actually developed two models here, a relative humidity only model, and then also a temperature and relative humidity model for this logistic regression uh, exercise. And we used the dark sky API data, which is georeference data, uh, to pull in the weather information for GPS specific uh, points on a map. Just to show you what these probabilities look like, we've run the three models simultaneously, again, for our Arlington Research Station. Now, I will say that these data were actually used to build the model, so this is not a true validation, but it gives you an idea what this looks like if we uh, start in June here and carry this through to uh, the 1st of October. The orange line here are the probabilities uh, for the temperature relative humidity combination model. The gray line is the relative humidity only model. And then the blue line is that tar spot index model. The scale over here on this vertical axis on the left is the tar spot probability for the orange and the gray line. And then over on the right hand side is the index value for that blue line. You can see we actually have two peaks uh, in the 2018 data set for this particular location where we have an early peak. However, it was short lived, maybe only about a week to 10 days. And then we had a substantial secondary peak that occurs in August here. And that was quite long lived. Uh, pretty much ranging the whole month, and you can see that's when the tar spot epidemic actually started. Now it's important to actually validate in different locations and take that model and see how it actually performs in a location where it wasn't built. So we actually did this, uh, again, looking at our Montfort location for 2018. 
Again, very telling here in terms of the severity of the epidemic. You can see this orange, gray, and the blue lines all up over their action thresholds where we set the action for the relative humidity models at 30%. And that for the uh, blue-lined uh, model here, the tar spot index model actually at 5 you can see that, that uh, we had a substantial uh, risk for tar spot uh, that, that spanned uh, almost three weeks or more here at the end of June and into early July. And that's actually when we first started to observe tar spot at this particular location. Now this explains some of why it was so impactful at that location. Very conducive weather conditions coincided with a very susceptible growth stage of, of these corn plants. So prior to tassel, we had this epidemic move in and that's why it took so much yield uh, from us. In previous years where we've had tar spot in the state, we didn't have this early onset, or at least the weather conditions didn't appear as conducive. We only had the, the late season peak, which explained the onset of the epidemic. When the epidemics like that move in after tassel, they're less impactful to yield. We can see this case with the Iowa uh, County location in Wisconsin. This was one of our locations in 2016 where we had seen uh, uh, an epidemic uh, up here late in the season. And again, we don't have that early season peak here. We only have the late season peak, which shows us that the weather was conducive definitely in the August time frame, but not really earlier than that. And we didn't observe tar spot until after yield was pretty much determined on these plants. So here's the take home for 2019 and preparing for what you're going to do with management of tar spot here in Wisconsin. Please pay attention to the Wisconsin crop manager. We're going to be running our tar spot models and we'll be interpreting those models and giving you weekly recommendations on whether you should be maybe considering a fungicide application. Remember, if tar spot uh, probability is high early in the season prior to that tasseling period, we may need to apply a fungicide at that time. And we may also need a second fungicide after uh, or around tassel in order to control this epidemic uh, to preserve yield. But that all depends on the weather and we have to watch what's going on in season. Also remember that no hybrid was immune to tar spot. However, we did have a range and resistance to susceptibility in some hybrids. So if you still have the chance, try to choose a hybrid that at least rated uh, low in terms of tar spot severity. We know that fungicides can be important uh, and we do have many options. Again, mixed mode of action products being uh, the most efficacious at, or at least the most uh, consistent in terms of efficacy, but we need to make sure we get the timing right. And so that timing is really going to depend on what the weather's doing at particular growth stages. So pay attention to what's going on again at the V6 uh, application timing and also at the VT application timing. We are working on a prediction uh, model in terms of a smartphone app. We're going to call this Tar Spotter. However, we're not going to be releasing this in 2019. We're going to be using it as a research tool. But we will, again, be running those uh, models and we'll be interpreting those models to the Wisconsin Crop Manager. In terms of rotation and tillage, again, we don't have great information on this uh, right now. I would say don't change your whole operation just for tar spot. Remember, there are other diseases out there that you also have to manage, including northern corn leaf blight and, and potentially gray leaf spot. So don't forget those other foliar diseases that can be important as well. If you'd like more information about tar spot, we do have a fact sheet from our crop protection network. You can download that fact sheet directly from the CPN website. You can also visit badgercropdoc.com and find various videos and, and blog posts pertaining to tar spot as well. If you'd like to contact me directly, here is my information. Again, the badgercropdoc.com website, uh, a very useful tool. Or you can consult your local extension agent for other information.